exciting episode of Perpetually Ajar. I am your host, Katie Johnson, aka Weishni, Penny Pella Donut, Cinderfall, and Velvet the Chocolate Rabbit. And I am here with my amazing co host. What is up, my dudes? Uh, it's Bo here. I voice Winter and Ilya for Ruby Bridge slash Kruby Productions. I am also the lead director and head of the VR short department, as well as one of the lead writers for the VR short scripts. And I'm also one of the other co-hosts of uh, this podcast and yes. also uh, Kruby Talk, I think. Yes, Is perhaps. that it? I think yeah, that's I think everything. that's what it's called. And I also <laughs> forgot to mention, I also host this podcast called Perpetually Ajar. It's real fun. And I, mean, I also do a little bit of writing on the VR shorts sometimes. And those are really neat too please look out for our new one whenever it comes out it'll be great (laughs) when it's done yes when it is done exclamation mark and we have a very special guest with us here today if you would like to introduce yourself oh boy how did we do it (laughs) i am lauren of the landa (gasps) yes and no landa is not an actual place just it is now just in case some people were like Where's Lambda? No, for sure. They're Google Mapsing it right now. Yeah. So I'm in my map. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) By the way, one of the things I I asked uh, before we started the interview was (laughs) if Katie was hopped up on coffee. (laughs) Y'all. This is me. This is real. This is me. (laughs) This is the energy Katie exudes. She's always like, hey, Bo, um, so we're not going to record as early as we did last time. You know, we're going to record at like... At like eleven my time, and I'm like Katie, that's nine a.m. my time, <laughs> and she's just like, oh shit, <laughs> whoopsie doops, girl, you cray cray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for right. having me. Yeah, Thank we're you. really Yay. excited that we could have you on the show. Yes, for all of you viewers at home, we are at Anime Los Angeles right now, well, which we- is not even mm-hmm. in Los Angeles. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, Ontario. I, I was wondering about that. I flew into Ontario, and I was like, wouldn't LAX be closer? Because we like- we partied too hard at the old hotel uh, and got kicked out. Mm, <laughs> I got you. I got you. ALA is where it's at, though. I've been coming mm-hmm. to this con for, I think, damn near close to 10 years now. Yeah. Wow. And wow. it's like, I, it's it's definitely not the con that it was, you know, 10 years ago. But mm-hmm. I would say so. I, I think it's, I, I think it's definitely, um, it still has its charm, but I think it's definitely, it's grew for sure. Mm-hmm. Grew. Wow. It's, um, one of those words. It's it's six nineteen. I've been up <laughs> since like six a.m. Uh, it's grown for sure. Yes, I, I can not speak English properly. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's definitely grown, and I like this convention center. I like the area that it's in. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's better than the congested area next to LAX. Absolutely. So, mm-hmm. You yeah. know. Yeah. And you know, fun fact: they actually shot several episodes of Supergirl season one <gasps> here at the convention center. Wow. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah, amazing. Max still haven't Lord, seen it. His, uh, mm-hmm. in the first season, he's one of the kind of not villains, but antagonistic characters. Ooh, okay. And he he's kind of like, he runs this like media and science empire and mm-hmm. his, the convention center is like his like home base, basically. Nice. That's <laughs> awesome. I've actually never been to Anime Los Angeles. This is my first time. Yay! But yay, I'm so happy. Insert sound effect of crowd cheering yes, here. Yes, absolutely. Brian. I'm counting on you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Brian. Audio guys. I yes. did go to Anime Expo when it was a lot hotter outside, and it was a very fun con, but it was, it was so hot. Yeah. Was so much. I'm really loving Anime the weather Expo. right now. <laughs> yeah. That is a whole podcast itself. <laughs> so much. But yeah, we're just really happy to be here. We've got a fun guest, and we're just doing some fun stuff. And I really just want to know, like, what have you guys been up to? Like, what have you been up to, Bo? What have you been up to in your entertainment life? In my entertainment yeah, like, life? What are you watching? What are you playing? What are you doing? Like, Ooh. Oh, okay. Do you want to start, Bo? I have a lot. Do you want to start? And then I'll <laughs> I mean, I, I'm i always I'm always on my same bullshit. Yeah. I, I'm always playing League of Legends. Same, that's, that's the big one that mm-hmm. I've been streaming a lot. Um, working on my third playthrough of Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yeah. <laughs> I got to do all the routes. <laughs> wow! I saved I saved Blue uh, Blue Lions for last mm-hmm. because uh, you know I heard that that was one of the best routes. So keep mm-hmm. my fingers crossed for good endings. Um, do you ship anybody? I Ooh. really ship female Byleth and Edelgard. Yeah. Okay. Because it's like the one like actually like super gay ship <laughs> that is just like 
unabashedly gay. Mm-hmm. Like, like Edelgard's so, like, useless when she's, like, flirting with <laughs> fl- female Byleth. We it's just the it. cutest thing ever, and I'm just like, Aww. yes, okay. I love Cause it. Because it doesn't, it doesn't feel, like, pandery. It's just, it yeah. genuinely feels like these two characters fall for each other. Mm-hmm. And I like that. I like when you ship, I-, I personally like shipping characters that I think would be would have good chemistry good or if or if I sense something. I don't mm-hmm. like it when when it's like forced. You yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's some ships that that I feel can be a little I th- forced. I think the really hysterical ship for me in that one is actually um Catherine and Shamir, one of Allegra's characters. Oh, okay. Um, because uh, <laughs> they, so in, in Fire Emblem, you can reach like four different rankings. I think it's like A ranking, B ranking, or C ranking, and then like S you know, ranking. It's a good thing you know your ABCs. Yeah, <laughs> and then and then, but like S is when you've romanced them, right? Mm-hmm. Right, right. And so with this one, it goes from like C B A and then S. Okay. These two, Shamir and Catherine, can reach A plus, which is like they are such good friends. Mm-hmm. Insert air quotes here. They literally propose to each other. <laughs> are they like? But then cousin good friends oh <laughs> i know what you mean uh, <laughs> yeah they're like cousin good friends oh boy it's just kind of ridiculous it's like really they propose to each other and now it's just like a plus shamir and Catherine are best friends now and i'm like friends huh no. it's like xena and gabrielle all over again <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> no but um and then what i've been watching is uh the mandalorian of mandalorian course is that's that's my shit With my roommates baby. my roommates work on that show so that's really cool nice. and um and the witcher <gasps> um, <laughs> the witcher. okay can i talk about my stuff now yes, can I, can yes I, can please, I? Okay. please go off okay so i also just finished the witcher yeah uh that is a very good show mm-hmm. uh don't want to go into spoilers because yeah. there's still plenty of people who have mm-hmm. not watched it yet yeah i'm on mm-hmm. episode one uh oh you <laughs> Oh, you haven't even met like the thing. best character. Yet. Oh my god! I've right? heard the Barty is, boy. I love him. Is it the one? <laughs> oh, good lord! He is uh, hilarious. But there's also the other character that I I posted a picture resembling that character. Oh yes, 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 yes. 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 yes that character is really cool. Oh, you'll, yes. you'll you'll see. I've seen a lot of memes of these characters, and they I'm just are my like, favorite character yes. from the game. So the Witcher is. So I've never played the game. Never mm-hmm. played the game. Mm-hmm. Um, isn't there a comic book too? Uh, it's a, it's a. Uh, there probably is a comic, but originally the game was based off of a novel. A novel, a yeah, novel. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, I haven't read or played the games, but I loved the show. Mm-hmm. I thought the show was gorgeous. The music is so unique. Mm-hmm. It's very. Have you finished it? The fight I scenes have. were also really good. It. At the least the one scenes, I saw. Yeah, the fight scenes are very good. Um, it might be. Ugh, I want to tell people something, but it's it's a spoiler, and I don't want to tell them it. Mm-hmm. But I was able to understand the show better knowing mm-hmm. this one particular thing. Mm. You can probably guess what that is, uh, mm. but you can't say it. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have to talk about it after. I'm yeah, really curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that after. <laughs> um, what else have you been watching? Okay, or so I, <laughs> so um, let's see. I've been rewatching a lot of stuff. So I watched The Witcher. Uh, I started the original 90210, Beverly Hills 90210. Nice. Uh, and holy crapola, mm-hmm. so 90s and 80s, but I love it. <laughs> Luke mm-hmm. Perry, rest in peace. Uh, mm-hmm. but, oh, he was so pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> what else am I watching? I just watched The Witcher. I just watched, uh, oh, I am almost done re-watching Malcolm in the Middle, actually. Oh my gosh, that's a throwback. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I never finished it. I went mm-hmm. back and I started it, but I never finished it. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, oh, this is something I'm really excited about. Mm-hmm. I just finished every season on Netflix of The Walking Dead. Oh, so I okay. am really excited. I heard the comics ended recently. Did they? I believe oh. so. I didn't know that. Yeah, they. Uh, I wanted to catch up with my boyfriend because he's mm-hmm. up to date on everything. Yeah, and we love to talk to each other about the shows that we're mm-hmm. watching. And he's up to date. I am not. I'm like a half season behind, mm-hmm. which is not terrible because I just caught mm-hmm. up basically on like nine years or eight mm-hmm. years of The Walking yeah. Dead. And uh, and I, I want people to talk to about it because mm-hmm. I, you know, everyone's either ahead of me or they didn't they didn't watch oh, it. Oh, I know? relate to that so hard. Have you seen it? Not for Walking Dead, but Critical Role is a podcast I've been listening to for oh, the past okay. three months. And oh, I'm on man. episode 80 now. 
Oh. And there's 89 episodes, and I'm so excited to catch You're up. You're catching so I can... up. I still haven't. We talked about this on the last episode. <laughs> I know. I have not watched a single episode, and you are catching up. So, That's so my funny. my name, Bo, is one of the characters from Critical Role. That's Aww. where I got that name Bo's from. actually one of the people I... that, like, inspired me to want to watch it, because I love Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, I love yeah. everybody on that show. I'm not mm-hmm. familiar with D&D. Like, I, I know, obviously, I know what it is, but yeah. I've never played it. I mm-hmm. think oh, the idea should. of it is fantastic. That's what I'm told. Mm-hmm. But I love everybody <laughs> on that show, so... So I I oh, yeah. love seeing my friends just they're amazing performers, amazing well, people. Just, they're yeah. amazing people, amazing performers. But they have what I truly respect about them is that something that is really a simple idea. You know, film film mm-hmm. ourselves while playing D and D has grown mm-hmm. and it's grown to be so big. Yeah, it's we're in the huge. renaissance of it, D&D right now. It's yeah, insane, because like, really. like, I watch I, well, I'm behind obviously, but when I watch the episodes live on Twitch mm-hmm. they have like two, three, three 400,000 people watching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, the man, I struggle to hit 10 viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Their Kickstarter, how much did it raise? Like it was, eight million? It was like eight like, million. Yeah. Their, their yeah. goal was like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, and they were and just like, like in forty five minutes. Just they crazy. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, I I'm they're all amazing and I adore mm-hmm. all of them. Uh the other thing that I'm super into right now, yeah. I have uh I I a while back I discovered webtoons. Ooh. And uh I have two favorite web comics. Wait, is it yes. Lore? Yes! Oh! yes! <laughs> Laura Olympus. So oh my god. Laura All Olympus is like it. Laura Olympus is one of my favorites and uh mm-hmm. Sub Zero is one of my other favorites. Um Sub Zero is uh the author's name is Juniper mm-hmm. and uh and then uh Rachel is the creator of uh mm-hmm. of Laura Olympus yeah. and uh so Hades and Persephone, that's always been mm-hmm. my favorite mythology story. Yeah, yeah. Um I love the designs. Like the, the way designs they do are it. beautiful. Um and Sub Zero is so one of my favorite anime shows way back in the day was Fushigi mm-hmm. Yugi. Yeah. And it's very like a kind of like a, a old story, like mm-hmm. romantic kind of story, which yeah. I love. I'm a romantic at heart. Mm-hmm. And uh that's basically what I feel kind of from Sub Zero. Mm-hmm. Uh it's the art is beautiful, the character design is gorgeous. And uh, Laura Olympus is just, like I said, it's my favorite mythology story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the way, the creativity that she's put into Laura Olympus and and the character personalities and all of that, it really is fantastic. And uh, I'm really excited that it's going to be mm-hmm. turned into a show. I, I think I saw that. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be turned into a young adult show. Netflix? Right? Uh, Did they pick it up? I think so. I don't know. Yeah. I think so. Uh, but I that's definitely one that I would love, love mm-hmm. to read for. Mm-hmm. Don't know if it's gonna happen or not, but yeah. you know, oh, wish... is it is it gonna be an animated show or I believe uh, I think it I has to be. About yeah. It. Oh, okay. yeah. I, 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 I yes, yeah. I believe. I mean, it's I be... mean technology nowadays, CGI. Right. 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 Yeah. But, but I think you know, it would be more justice. Blue monkey to like, people that, yeah. you know, attach their the ends of their ponytails yeah. to each other. Just like, so. I think that like comic book movies in general, <laughs> hot yeah. opinion right here is that I think animated movies do them more justice. Like, I think the live action aren't as good as what animated movies do. Spider-Verse. I, I mean. Th- yeah, that's That fair. one apparently did really well. I didn't yeah. see it, but I've heard mm-hmm. really good things. I think it definitely depends on how it's done. Yeah. Um, Laura Olympus, I believe, is going to be animated, um, mm-hmm. which I totally support. Yeah. Um, as long as it's made into a production, mm-hmm. I'm happy with it. Yeah, for sure. Um, like, gets the love it deserves. Exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. And I also really want that for Sub-Zero, too. I mm-hmm. actually, I, I, at some point, um, I really wanted to mm-hmm. message the author and just be like, let me voice one of your characters, <laughs> please! Uh, because Honestly, how you gotta do it, you gotta tweet them. I, hey, how, I have tweeted. Cast I have tweeted as, at her. That's exactly. That's how Christina so got cast in right? Ruby like it's four so years real. ago. She's like, "Yo, how do I audition for, for Ruby?" Oh, and now she's so like, funny. That is and now hilarious. she's in the new season. Yep. So. Advice taken. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they're both wonderful and beautifully um, created, and and I just I'm a big fan of them. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, what else? I'm trying to think about what else I've been. We live like in a very saturated world for entertainment. <sighs> we so, do. Like, it's easy to just get like, like overstimulating. So yeah, yes. we do. Like oh, there's so many choices. The next thing I'm going to start is okay. Dracula. Oh, uh, the new Dracula on mm-hmm. Netflix. Um, I've been hearing mixed reviews on it. Some people have said that they really like it. Some yeah. people have said, eh. You know? Not the what we do in the shadows. But. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not what we do in the shadows. But mm-hmm. I, uh, funny story about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was in uh, New Zealand for a convention. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Armageddon Expo. Yeah. Um, and uh, <clears throat> and I was in the van with a couple of the other guests, mm-hmm. and um, uh, Sharon Lee was also a guest with me there, and we were talking about the vampire culture mm-hmm. in um in New Zealand Mm -hmm. and how it's kind of popular there. And there was a museum across the way from our hotel where they have like a bunch of steaks on display there. Mm -hmm. And I said, Oh, that's really interesting. And I, and, and then someone else said, well, it's because they filmed what we do in the shadows here. And I said, Oh, that makes sense. You know, I've never, I've never seen that movie. Um, I've heard good things. So then this gentleman behind us leans forward and in a very beautiful you know, accent mm-hmm. says, says, oh, hey guys, how's it going? And we're like, oh, we're, we're doing good, mm-hmm. you know? And he says, oh, what do you, what do you guys do? Mm-hmm. Oh, we're, we're voice actors. Yeah. Oh, cool, awesome. And I said, oh, what do you do? He's like, oh, I do film. I'm like, cool. We pull up to the convention center, we mm-hmm. get out, and I notice he's dressed in a very interesting outfit. And uh-huh. I'm like, I'm like, oh, what do you, what, what mm-hmm. have you done? He's like, oh, what we do in the shadows. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and he played, um, oh goodness, it starts with a D. Oh my gosh! <laughs> not Dracula. Not, not Dracula. <laughs> is he the one that like has like the the long curly hair? N- he's like... the one with the. Oh my goodness! I'm letting all it's of been your a minute. followers down right now. Oh no! But yeah, I can't remember his name. <laughs> yeah, it's but fine. yeah, but anyway, he was one of the main characters in that. That's so, amazing. That's a really yeah. Small it was world. really funny because he was also a guest there. But, <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, that movie is hysterical. Yes, it's really funny. It's one of my favorites, and I'm glad that it like got more love and I think on Netflix they did a little something else with it too. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. There's yeah, a yeah, series yeah. for yes. it, right? Yeah, I haven't gotten to watch that yet. I'm just but. over here nodding like I haven't seen this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I'd really like it. Like it's, it's funny to shame the bow. Dark. Yes. <laughs> shame the bow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There so, really are like a lot of choices of things to like watch. The only thing I've really been obsessed with is Critical Role in Stardew Valley that's like my baseline right well, now. Well, you and a lot of other people have an obsession with Critical Role. Yes. So, you know? It's a good obsession to have, honestly. It's really good. I'm going like... to probably buy some merch this weekend, and it's going to be amazing. Well, there goes the camera. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing this is an audio podcast. Yes. But were you going to say something, though? Oh, no, I was going to say... um yeah, just uh, again, because Critical Role, obviously, I mm-hmm. took my name from it. it yeah, it yeah, means yeah. The world to me is it's so cool to think that it's like these are just fictional characters, and it's not like it's not like this predetermined, like scripted story that they're following. I mean, to a yeah. degree, you know, the DM scripts, you know, yeah, what of what they do essentially, and it's kind of like he has to adjust things. Yeah. Where I, th- how many times have I heard Matt on the podcast just be mm-hmm. like, like, well. You guys were not supposed to beat him in four turns. <laughs> well, you know or what, Matt, like that. Matt, along with being just a, an incredibly genuine human being, mm-hmm. Matt has always been, for as long as I've known him, Matt has always been a, a wonderful storyteller. Mm-hmm. So the fact that he is the DM makes oh, yeah. perfect sense. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So he does a really good job. Yeah. But it's just incredible to see not just him, but the rest of the voice actors and the rest of the people that are on every episode like experience these stories as these characters yeah. and see how like emotionally invested they get. Like in the yeah. first campaign, um, uh, Vexalia, Laura's character, mm-hmm. her her first death that Liam's she has, twin, right? yeah, 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 the first death that she has. Like when she realized that she died, like this look on her face, and it was just like, oh my god! Like y- you could mm. feel like how stressed she yeah. was. Yeah, Aww. it's so, so real. Yeah. They, well, I'm just glad that they can start new campaigns. Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah, I mean they yeah. did 115 like, episodes of that one. Oh, man, mm-hmm. yeah. So but yeah, I think we are ready to move on. And usually, right now, we would go to our Kruby News Corner, which is where we kind of cover what's going on in the world of Kruby, but. This week we're ALA, so we're probably going to skip that yay. segment. Yeah, well, I'm had, not saying yay over skipping it. I'm just like, yay, ALA. No, for yeah, sure, for I sure. mean, that to rhymes. be fair, mm-hmm. last episode, which just came out yesterday from when we're filming this, <laughs> or recording this, yeah. uh, had, had a like a 20-minute Kruby yeah, News Yeah, we corner, covered a lot so. of Kruby News. Oh, good so Lord. Normally I'm so the one we're that good. does the updates for that. But so. before we get into our Weissbreakers, would you like to tell the audience a little bit about what you do? Oh, yeah, that's important. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, let's see. I am a voice actress, and you guys might know me as Merlin from The Seven Deadly Sins, mm-hmm. Sailor Neptune from Sailor Moon and Sailor Moon Crystal, Annie Lionheart from Attack on Titan, Female Robin from Fire Emblem Heroes and Fire Emblem Awakening, uh, 
Karen Kanzuki from Street Fighter V. Um, um, oh my goodness. Bo, help me out. Uh, Kyoko Sakura. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Monica> Magica. <laughs> Brian's um, like, oh God, not that show. <laughs> uh, Kyoko Sakura from Madoka Magica. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sakuya from Sword Art Online. Squiggly uh-huh. from Skullgirls. Nice. Um, uh, oh my God. Oh, Siduri. Uh, Siduri in uh, Fate Grand Order, which is mm-hmm. currently on Tunam. Oh, nice. I, I don't look at me. I have a while. Wow, I'm this is how t- I'm awful. I'm and still on fan. Fate Extra. <laughs> no, it's all good. I, it's, it's all good. Um, also, uh, uh, Juvia, right? In, um, Fairy Tale? Or not Juvia. Not, uh, Luvia. Luvia Galita Edelfelt from uh, Fate from Stay Night. From Fate, darling. <laughs> yes, that's yeah, me, darling. Oh. I was, you know, it's funny because when I was first watching it, I was just like, oh, yeah, like I love the Fate, the Fate mm-hmm. series so much. And I was well, really excited. She does excited. love her wrestling, now doesn't she? <laughs> yeah, and I was watching it, and it got to like the very end, and I was like, "Oh man, this chick!" And then she spoke, and I was like, "That's Lauren. I know Lauren anywhere." <laughs> I think I messaged you like only a few one minutes later. episode, darling. Is that not ridiculous? Just one word out, and she's like, "Girl." Oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. It's just one episode, though. It's ridiculous. Livia deserves more attention mm-hmm. than that, does she not? She does. I mean, she's she's one of the main characters of the Magical Girl spinoff of Fate, but that was like a while ago, and like what really, is that? it's what is um that? Fate, uh, Ilya, like Prisma Ilya Khalid or something like that, and it's like. <laughs> It's like lolly, like Darling, really that cringe. that sounds like some sort of a disease. Are you all right? <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, goodness. Now we're going to get you in character just the whole show. It'll be I, I mean, <laughs> Luvia was just so much fun to mm-hmm. do. Um, I'm trying to think of who else, but there's there's a lot. There's yeah. a lot. And I am... Extensive IMDb. Yes. And there is uh, going to be... A crap ton more. Ooh, so that's always yeah, good. 2020, 2020, man, it's it's gonna be ah. a wild year. Yeah, and I'm excited for everyone. Well, make to sure see it. to look out for all of that. Make sure to follow her on Twitter. Keep up with all yes, of this stuff. Yes, Twitter, Lauren underscore a underscore Landa. That is the only Twitter account for yes. me. Mm-hmm. Anything else is a fake. Yes. So don't yep. follow that stuff. Then, yes. without any further ado, let's get into our wife breakers. I'm so ready. Yes. All right. So okay. usually how these go is whenever me and Bo like put these out there. Usually the first one Bo will disagree on, and then like me and the guest will agree on and then like the rest of them someone else will disagree oh we're boy. trying to get like perfect unison on agreement I, we got it once on our actually the la- the season finale for our first season yes um, all, all all three, three of questions us. all yeah. three people <clears throat> were on the same page for oh everything boy. so it's funny but I also, like, see the differences I also have a habit of convincing people to yes. come to my side you have like so a quirk we'll see. or whatever it would be called <laughs> we'll see Bo we'll, we'll see. see all right we'll see. so Challenge I am accepted. not easily persuaded Doc. Yes. Challenge accepted. First, Weissbreaker. Would you rather know all the mysteries of the universe or know every outcome of every choice you make? Okay. I can tell you right off the bat. Okay. uh, I would rather know all the outcomes. Ooh. Yeah. That's so much power. Mm Mm-hmm. That's so dangerous. Well, because I'm already an overthinker and I already think about every possible outcome. Mm -hmm. So that would cause me... A that would less that stress would yes. more stress. Less stress, I think. I think mm. it would help because me a you, lot. Because you would me. know you would know definitively mm-hmm. like what, yeah, exactly. what your actions So would do bring. you have to decide to do it and then you know the outcome first? Or do you like look at a situation and you're like, what would happen if I meddled here? And then you know? Like, I would like to think how I imagine it yes. is uh, I look at it and then all of the scenarios go through my mm, head. That would be very OP, but very, mm-hmm. very convenient. Yes. Uh, OP, yeah. please nerf. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Um, you know, I, I kind of I kind of want to know, what was the first one? The, uh, the first one and- was, would you rather know all the mysteries of the universe or See, the letter? I would want to know, and I'm going to reference. I've okay. referenced it every okay. single time, whenever I can. My biggest, my biggest frustration in history is the burning of the Library of Alexandria. Oh, yeah. And so, knowing all the mysteries of the universe, I would have all the answers of the mm. things that were burned in the Library of yeah. Alexandria. Mm. Like, I'm trying to think so. of the benefits for both in terms of how they apply to your everyday life. Sure. Because, like, your answer makes more sense for my needs. Mm-hmm. But Bo's answer, it's very profitable. I can make a lot oh, of yeah, money. yeah, I can sell the information, absolutely. I know, but I'm, it's also like... I'm neutral I'm evil, so, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so curious, though, because, like, I wonder how I would, how I would exist Is in life. Is that a D&D term? Yes. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm so proud of it. Neutral so. evil serves only Oh, yeah, themselves. yeah, yeah. All the alignments. I, I, I'm not actually neutral evil, but every alignment test I take mm-hmm. says that I okay, am. Okay, look, so I I'm just get like, one thing. Give me, you know, slow down a little bit. I'm still celebrating that. Yeah, she'll be on a d <laughs> podcast another time. She'll oh, learn all about God. it. God. <laughs> but, like, for the knowing all the mysteries of the universe, like, I feel like I get really sad. Because, like, what if I learn, like, some really dark stuff, man? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean. I don't know if I, I think, want that. I, I personally <laughs> think there are some things that human beings beings sh- are not equipped to know yeah i'm gonna end up like homura i feel like, like both of these are going exactly why we <laughs> should not know so homura yeah. did nothing wrong yeah. Yeah. but knowing every outcome you'd never be willing to like there's no such thing as a risk anymore there's no such thing as taking a I chance mean, i'm and, like cool wouldn't with that, that be boring no maybe yeah <laughs> i don't i don't need to I don't really need risks to make my life exciting. My life is exciting on its own. Ooh. That makes me, but the Ooh. knowing the outcome to stuff kind of makes me feel like, to a degree, every second is like the tail end, like the last yeah. time you relive Groundhog Day, where you're just oh. able to dodge everything. Well, yeah. well, let me rephrase <laughs> it. Let me rephrase it. It would only work if I constant. It's like a superpower. Okay, I so you have I to would actively. you have to charge yeah, you it. You have up. to oh, actually okay. charge it and yeah. like and actually like it's like telekinesis, right? You have to use yeah. that that yeah. energy to do that. Yeah. That's what I mean. Okay. okay, yeah, it wouldn't be for every single thing. It wouldn't happen like just naturally. Yeah. You would have to activate it, exactly. like mind reading. Like, yeah, it would exactly. Be torture if just every moment you're just like get uh, these thoughts out of my head yeah. from everyone. We've all seen Buffy. We know that's not yes. a good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> okay, then yeah. I think, yeah, I think I'm going to go with you. Yay! I think I want to know outcomes, and Bo is the so, the odd one out for I'm the gonna, universe I'm gonna mysteries. Stick, I'm going to stick with my guns and Whatever, and say, Rebel. Mm, well, whatever. you're just so chaotic Dab. neutral. <laughs> chaotic evil. Dab. All right, then our next voice breaker. Would you rather have coffee or tea appear whenever you want it for the rest of your life? Coffee. Or have food <laughs> cost half the original price for the rest of your life? So you get you like can't half survive off. off of coffee. Yeah, yeah, but food, half money price on food. food. Yeah. yeah, like because from a practical standpoint, like duh. But like, I really like coffee. Yeah, but you can but make you could coffee. save money yeah. on coffee, yeah. and the money you're not spending on coffee, you could spend on. This food. is true. This is yeah. a very practical answer. I'm going with the the half priced. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm trying to think about if they would be equal benefits. Are like, we I'm not, unanimous? I'm not disagreeing yet. No. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm trying to think. I. She's I am definitely way. leaning more towards what you guys are saying, but I'm just trying to see if there could be any benefit that the other one do it, Katie, the be food a, one. Be you a rebel. Know? You have to make a decision. Oh, it's so hard. <laughs> okay, I'm going with food. Food. It's, it's unanimous. Unanimous. We got a unanimous. Go. Good job, guys. We did high it. five. We did it. Yeah. High five. Excellent. Yes. All right. There's actual high fiving going on there. <laughs> then, <laughs> final wise breaker. Would you rather be able to dodge anything no matter what or be able to ask any three questions and have them answered accurately? Like, in Can I dodge responsibilities? <laughs> uh, what yes. is it? Yeah, what does that mean, dodge so, anything? I'm going to assume that it means like physically, like if there's ever anything coming at you yeah. like that's going to hurt you, like – you you just so nat twenty on reflex save? yes exactly <laughs> so what exactly. was it dodge anything or what yeah would you rather be able to dodge anything no matter what like uh-huh. even if someone's shooting a gun right here it's just gonna go boop like yeah yeah, hit yeah, you. yeah yeah not gonna hit you or be able to ask any three questions and have them answered accurately dodge anything yeah like yeah yeah. yeah. Because with questions like that, with questions, you can find out the answers some most of the time. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? So that's it would like only be like an existential thing. Exactly. That really help yeah. With. So I'm, uh, I'm for dodging. Yeah. Same. Honestly, oh my god! Yeah, another really unanimous. Yeah. We did it. Yeah. Wow. Two out of three. So I was only a rebel for one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you always start rebel as the rebel, scum. and then like we kind of like work our way back to it. Yeah, that's fair. That All right. Fair. Well, I feel like we're pretty Weiss broken in. Yeah. I think it's time that we start our winter view questions. Uh-oh. Winter view questions. I'll go ahead and take the first yeah, yeah, one you take here. The first one. So, uh, originally what this was is because every other episode, Katie and I are just by ourselves now. So we're doing mm-hmm. every other episode as a guest now. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we were trying to think of kind of ways to kill time that would normally we would have a guest talking. And mm-hmm. so the idea came about that we would ask each other questions that we mm-hmm. were always kind of curious about each other. Yeah. Sure. And so um, if you would like to answer these, obviously we would love to hear what you think. Um, my first one is, what is something you've always wanted to do but never really had the means to do it? Mm-hmm. Means like financially? Yeah, yeah whatever financially could or mean to you, just time. Maybe like, yeah. huh. Whatever it could be. 
You know, I sometimes think about that. Uh, hmm. I don't mean to send anyone into an existential <laughs> crisis. <laughs> no, I, I think honestly, it you know, uh, it might be kind of a dull answer, but for me, uh, I can't think of anything. I've I've been very fortunate. I've been very mm-hmm, fortunate. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a career that I love. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have wonderful people in my life. Um, uh, I'm able to afford the living mm-hmm. that I have. Um, but I guess one thing is that I'd love to be able to help you know, close friends and and family in need financially. Mm -hmm. I think Mm -hmm. that's something that I've always wanted to do, but don't necessarily have the means. No, I absolutely respect that. That's that's like, you know, that's kind of something it's like not necessarily, I I wouldn't say necessarily helping, but one thing I've never really been able to do aside from the very first holiday season I ever worked at Disneyland is Mm -hmm. I've never been able to afford to give people Christmas gifts. Yeah, You know, people will give me a gift or whatever. And I almost feel obligated to give something back and not, not that I don't want to, Sure, sure. but I've just never been financially able to do something like that. You know, Christmas is very tough. And so like, I kind of get that, like, you know, wishing that you could just do something for someone because you're, you're able to not necessarily even be, because you have to or because yeah. they asked you to but because you're able to yeah mm-hmm. you know that's something i i think that's what i would I, was that the question i forgot yeah, what no, yeah. <laughs> what's something that you've always wanted to do but yeah never really that's had the means to that's do? it like wow. i because i honestly that's think a really good answer well mm-hmm. i just i i i don't get much pleasure out of buying myself um knickknacks and and stuff i i mm-hmm. you know yeah. um i i i get much more pleasure out of you know, uh, sp- spoiling my friends mm-hmm. and my boyfriend and my and my family, um, rather than spoiling myself. Yeah. Occasionally, I'll want to treat for well, myself. Yeah, you yeah. know, you got treat yourself, treat, treat yourself. yourself. <laughs> yeah, but no, I I genuinely get a lot of satisfaction out of that. So that's something that yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a really good answer because, like, you. usually the thought process would go to like, "Oh man, what crazy thing can I do?" But like, mm-hmm. that's a really like humbling answer. I know, but it's it's like I but know it's that so pe- real. it is very real. Like yeah. people people like probably expect like, "Oh, I would fly around the world." It's mm-hmm. like I I I travel a lot. Yeah, like mm-hmm. you've taking already- a travel break mm-hmm. is nice for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So getting yeah. to spend longer than a few yourself. weeks yeah. at home. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was a nice, nice holiday break. Let me oh, tell you. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> what so, about you, yeah. Katie? Man. Oh, gosh. I'm trying to think because, like, I'm kind of in a similar vein, but it's more family related. My mom has always been, like, kind of my rock. Sure. And, like, I always wanted to buy her, like, a green punch buggy car because she always loved them Aww. it's very specific like and i know it probably sounds like i'm piggybacking off of yours no because yeah. like growing up she would always be like one day katie when you're rich i need i need one of those and like Aww. she would just joke about it we'd play punch buggy in the car and like what's punch like, buggy oh it's like this game maybe it's just in the south but whenever you see a beetle bug car go by uh-huh. you just like tap them on the leg and say punch buggy oh okay it's so you don't really actually cute. yeah i mean you i know, mean some people so do my mom but. grew up in oklahoma and <laughs> yeah. so i know punch buggy and she used to punch me oh yeah <laughs> like my brothers would like i mean not like you know abuse <laughs> they'd punch, square off but, but like, like it was <laughs> i would hope not no yeah no, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> just knock you out punch buggy but yeah i just really want like to buy my mom everything <laughs> Because, yeah. like, I would not be the person I am without her. Yeah. She's a very yeah. strong woman. And I'm just like, I want to be a strong woman. I want to buy yeah. you stuff. Go after, <laughs> take after mama. I yeah. know I know that it was my question, but my my answer for this one yeah. would be, um, I've honestly wanted to be able to just disappear for, like, a month or two. Ooh. Just kind of go backpacking somewhere. Yeah. Not, not necessarily like the wild. Wait, like, have not, a not the wild, journey. but kind mm-hmm. of, like, like honestly just crash at hostels. Like, yeah. just just kind of go somewhere. Even Not even necessarily leave the country, but just go places that I haven't been to just to be able to kind of disconnect for a little while. Yeah, that yeah. Sense. That's yeah. something that I've always... I almost did it a couple years ago. Yeah. Because I, I felt like I was financially able to. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then my health took a turn, and then I was no longer financially yeah, able yeah. to or capable of doing so yeah because there can be um, a lot of factors in life that can prevent you from doing stuff sometimes like yeah. it's not just money sometimes yeah so True. that's uh, not, not necessarily go anywhere crazy but just yeah. kind of live live on the road for a short time yeah. just kind of see what that's like I could see that for you yeah. yeah be a little bit of a nomad for a short time nomad and nowhere. then come back and just be like my my xbox thank you <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> good answer guys all right yeah, yeah. Good well answers. let's go into our next one 
what is a challenge you faced in your career and how did you overcome it? Hmm. Crying. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. Um, you know, there's no specific answer to that because in mm -hmm. my career there are challenges every day. Yeah. Um, realistic challenges, um, you know, um, behind the scenes challenges mm -hmm. uh but um i can't name any specific ones at the yeah. moment because there's a lot of them um specifically career wise of course, yeah. um what about you bo um i think i have an answer can i get the question one more time yes so what is a challenge you faced in your career and how did you overcome it uh, career, you know, I, I would love to say that Kruby is my career just because of how much time and, yeah, uh, and effort course. and like, you know, just emotion that goes into this for me because I love this project. Yeah. But I really, I really enjoyed working at Disneyland. Like mm -hmm. for a while, I considered that my career. I mean, you, you know, Lauren, you know, mm -hmm. the first time we went to Disneyland, yeah. I was basically like a tour guide telling you guys about mm -hmm. stuff and whatnot. Um, well, I had been. Yeah. Well, I yeah, had but been. like behind the scenes stuff right, and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. 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 And, um, you know, one of the, the most challenging parts of that is before I started working there, I struggled very much with, like, I had a really nervous stutter a lot. Yeah. And it was really kind of public speaking. And, you know, working at Disneyland when, you know, your boss comes up and tells you, like, hey, Bo, so you see that, like, group of, like, 500 people that are sitting? They're in a standing area. You need to go make them stand up. Yeah. You learn, you learn real quick to talk to people. Yeah. You know, it's so funny so. that you say that because I'll sometimes <laughs> – I'll sometimes be at conventions and uh, sometimes when I'm walking through the halls, mm -hmm. people like to stop in the middle of the hallway mm -hmm. and block the hallway because yeah. they're either having a conversation or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then another bunch of people do it. Yeah. So what I'll do is I will use what I call my, my staffer voice. Mm -hmm. oh, I've never yeah. been a staffer at a convention, mm -hmm. but I know what it's, you know, like yeah. I, I've yeah. seen it be done. It, it's my Disney voice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'll yeah. walk through the hallway and if I'm going to an autograph signing or a panel and if I need to get by and if people are making mm -hmm. it very difficult, I'll be like, oh, say something like, do not block the hallways. Yep, yep. Move to the side, and it's, yep. it makes me sound very angry, but it yeah. works no, it because the, the voice. Done. Yeah, exactly. It gets the job done. Yeah, it demands it's, authority. Exactly. So I could I could understand, but it's uncomfortable. Yeah, it's uncomfortable because because especially in your situation, you know. Was, you never know what those people are going to say if they're going to be like, I yeah. just want to see, you know, whatever, you know. Yeah, so, exactly. It's yeah. Yeah. that was that was something that was really hard for me to overcome. But mm -hmm. then one of my one of my leads kind of pulled me aside and saw that I was struggling with it and offered to kind of kind of let me shadow her a little bit. And she ended up being like hands down. I, I think I, I don't know if I've mentioned her on the podcast yeah. yet, but um, Jenica, she was she was my lead. Um, she was the first person that trained me when I first hired into Disneyland back in 2013. Yeah. Um, and like, she still to this day inspires me. Like mm -hmm. we're, we're still friends on Facebook and whatnot. And she just, she absolutely, she be, she's an ambassador now at Disneyland. Like she yeah. has like, what the does blue, that mean? It's the blue name tag when they have the blue name tags. But, but like, what is, what is an ambassador? Um, they basically, name? they my understanding is they basically get sent like all over the world to represent the Walt Disney Company. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so really she cool. she went from just being like a normal like cast member like I was to becoming a trainer and then a lead and wow. then became a manager and then joined the ambassador program, became an ambassador and now just travels the world representing the company basically. Wow. That's awesome. And she That's so amazing. she still inspires me to this day. That's so really cool. Yeah, she's Easily, hands down, one of the probably mo top five most influential people for my life that I actually, like, had direct contact with. That's amazing. Yeah. What about you? I think in a similar vein, there are challenges that, like, you face every day. But there are a few that, like, I'm still working on, you know, improving every mm -hmm. day. But, like, for example, um, audio quality is mm. something that, like, I always strive to, like, improve and that, like, I consistently want to work on <laughs> Brian over there. <laughs> <laughs> but another thing, too, is kind of dealing with that imposter syndrome. Like, because as performers or entertainers, there can sometimes be that feeling of, like, if you're not making as much money right now or, like, if you don't have this audition this month or you don't book this audition that month, mm -hmm. it can kind of be, like, what am I doing? Or, like, when someone asks what you do, that fear of, like, well, I haven't, like, worked in a month or, like, I did this project, but it's not like industry but it's still paid and so having those conversations has 
have become so much easier when I really found that confidence to say like your identity and the thing that you want to do is not defined by money or what other people think. It's about what you're consistently putting the work in and the time in to do. Mm. And that was something that was a struggle to like kind of learn because I always kind of let those other opinions kind of keep me from like saying like the things that I really wanted to say, like, you know, I'm or doing some things I wanted to do out of that fear or like that pride. Yeah. And so that was kind of something that, I've sort of overcome like, you know, obviously everybody in their own way in the entertainment industry struggles with a little bit of imposter syndrome around certain people, I'm sure, or like in certain situations. Mm -hmm. But like it's something that I've definitely gotten better about with my confidence Good. because I used to be a lot less energetic like growing up like I was not always this way <laughs> you were not always hopped up on coffee it's true I wasn't <laughs> like confidence like very fake it till you make it sometimes and then mm -hmm. it just like comes out sure yeah sure yeah cool that you're like looking at me, me really expectantly. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, it's really, you got the next question. This is this is really <laughs> bizarre for us guys because yeah. normally Katie and I and our guests are yeah. all in very different areas. Yeah, in this the world. is the first time we've recorded this like where we can look in at person. each other. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fun. We're always on Discord. Oh, I yeah. Love it. We I always love we it. always like record ourselves and then send our audio to Brian, who uh, then like cleans it up for like, us. Like I sync it up and then he makes it beautiful. Yeah, and then you guys were all brought together. So that's oh, a nice question. I was sitting yeah. here and I realized because I wrote these questions like a week ago mm -hmm. and I forgot. So this question was, oh uh, yeah, if you could drop everything and go backpacking anywhere in the world. <laughs> Uh, where would it be? Is that the question? <laughs> yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's the question. I've completely forgot that I wrote that. So when I like set my other card aside, I was like, oh god, I literally uh, yep. just talked about this. Yes. Uh, if I could go backpacking anywhere, uh, probably be Tuscany. Ooh, yeah, Tuscany, Italy, because Tuscany is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Katie just came I back from Italy. Italy. Italiano, I love. Yes, I went to Venice, Rome, and Florence. Oh, Florence. Yeah, Florence was honestly <laughs> one of my favorites. I think that's where Pisa was. Love, like, love yeah. Florence. The cathedral's there, are gorgeous, mm -hmm. and also the Statue of David's there. Or so. Was was that Rome or? No, no. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of. All, all I know is that she came back with a with a T-shirt with. A... <laughs> it was Mona Lisa dabbing <laughs> oh at the Leaning Tower of Pisa. God. There are so many shirts of things dabbing next to it. I, it's I, have crazy. To, I have to ask, how many carbs did you eat? So many. Oh my god, <laughs> so many. Yep, that was a problem. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> uh, what about you? Oh. I guess if I had to choose somewhere, um, Brazil. Yeah, Ooh. probably Brazil. Okay. Just because okay. it's it's so. From what I've seen and what I've heard. Um, uh, an actress who inspires me a lot, um, Dominique Provochocli, uh, she recently, well, I, I say recently, it was like two years ago. I have no sense of time. Uh, went kind of, kind of did that whole like disconnect and, and, you know, like disappeared for like a couple months and went down to Brazil and just kind of just lived on the road for a short time and seeing like the photos that she brought back and whatnot and just mm -hmm. kind of how how different the world is down there um, in certain places. Um, I just kind of, I want to go somewhere that's not like anywhere that I've ever been before. Sure. Because yeah. I've always yeah. been a big city person, mm -hmm. you know, like I've always lived, like I lived in Anaheim right by Disneyland, you know, I lived mm -hmm. in Santa Ana right by downtown Santa Ana. Yeah. Nice. You know, now I live in Long Beach, so it's like, I, I've always been, you know, kind of concrete, cement, very little green grass other than palm trees. Yeah, yeah. And so I think I would like to go just somewhere you know, I, I wouldn't do well in the heat, but I really would yeah. like to see kind of more of like a desert climate. Palm trees like, are overrated, by the way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they are. Especially, you know, in California, you mm -hmm. see a palm tree every like I'm five I'm from the south, <laughs> so we have all the greenery trees and cows. And Aren't you special? No. <laughs> I'm not. I'm from no. Alabama. I'm not special Aww. there. <laughs> so what, about, what about you, Katie? Where would you go backpacking? Japan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Japan. I just always wanted to go there, but I want to add something to the question. Can I bring my boyfriend? Cause, sure. Because sure. we've always wanted to go. No, bring... absolutely not. Okay. No boys allowed. No, no boys say. allowed. Girls trip. <laughs> Where in Japan specifically? Um, I think like Hokkaido would be really good, but Tokyo. Oh, I, Tokyo. You know, obviously, like. I'm I'm a big anime fan, and so like I'd love to see all of the. Yeah, I would have never I know. guessed Katie. Crazy, right? <laughs> but yeah, Tokyo is definitely on the top of the list. But there's also just like a lot of like scenery that I'd really like to see as well. Sure. 
in like country. a really yeah yeah I want to uh, I don't know where it's co- what it is so if I if I like say the wrong thing but the like the fox island where Ooh. they have like just the I've thousands of foxes that. where you can go and just see them running around mm-hmm. and frolicking I love foxes so oh, much they have so many cafes so. with like cats and owls and like or probably like a foxes. Shiba Inu cafe <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Oh. awesome dreams but yeah that's where I would go Awesome. Well, all right. Let's get to our last winter view question, and then we will get to our fan question. Yeah, And that'll be it. So, who is someone you admire or look up to, and why? There's, oh. uh... <laughs> did you I, just point? I did. Oh, I pointed at you. Oh, oh, there be so stop it. You're going to make me blush, and then I'm going to cry, <laughs> okay, and we're then not it's going to be a whole mess, and <laughs> people out there are going to see me as this giant sap, which I am. Um, <laughs> so they're not allowed to be anyone in this room. <laughs> That's the stipulation. Um, you know what? The first two people that popped up uh, are my parents. Mm-hmm. Um, my parents are two very amazing, very strong people. My mother, uh, like you, mm-hmm. has always been a rock in yeah. my life. My father... Uh, you know, for my father, I, I learned to be an empathetic Mm -hmm. and sensitive person and my mother, I learned how to be strong and, uh, they're just both very fantastic, very strong people. And there are things that I go to my mom for advice for, Mm -hmm. and then there are things that I go to my dad for advice for. And, and it's just because of their personalities and it's Mm -hmm. because of what I've learned from them. My dad and I are big movie buffs. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's my movie watching buddy. My mom could not care less about that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so she's she's pretty amazing, and my dad's pretty amazing, and I both I I love them both very much. There, but yeah, immediately when you said that, those are the yeah. two main people that popped into my head. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you know, know, it's you can tell them the real answer. Bro. <laughs> the, the real answer. No, no, no. I'm being no, funny. you that you, you absolutely do inspire me. Like Aww. seeing all the stuff that you're working on and whatnot. Like it's always it's something that I wish I I've kind of resigned myself. And I know that if I practiced and like worked on it, I I could probably do something voice acting wise. But I know that I'm more passionate about writing and directing. Sure. Sure. So that's kind of what. I, <laughs> wow, my ankle just cracked so loud. <laughs> Rude. Beautiful. <laughs> Snap, crackle, pop. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, a few people that I don't know personally that inspire me, and it's really, the reason I say a few people is because they all inspire me for very different reasons, sure. is they're yeah. all they're all actors that are in stuff that I, have really inspired me in the last, like, five years, give or yeah. take. Um, one is a name that I know you'll recognize is the lovely Ashley Birch. Yes, uh, yeah, Ashley. Um, her, her role as Chloe Price in Life is Strange absolutely changed my life and saved my life. It helped me through a really, really depressing, really yeah. dark part of my life. What game was that from again? Life is Strange. Life is Strange. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It was by yeah. Don't Nod and by Square okay. Enix as well. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but so like Chloe's struggle was something that I really, really related to heavily and it helped me realize a lot about myself, um, bad things about myself because originally mm-hmm. I didn't like Chloe as a character mm-hmm. because of how much she kind of, I like resonated with her and I felt like she kind of even resonated with me in a weird way. Mm-hmm. And But then her growth throughout the series really helped me kind of find a more healthy way of coping coping and dealing with stuff, dealing with my own issues. Mm-hmm. Um, two more people also from, they're from the same show, uh, is Kat Burrell and Dominique Provo-Chockley. They're from Winona Earp. Mm-hmm. They play um, uh, Nicole Hot and Waverly Earp. And their kind of, like, innocence and kind of, like, um, n- like naivety of originally going into playing those roles. Uh, because I've watched the series since it first started, and mm-hmm. um, it was it was just fun. But then it turned into something that really helped me, again, kind of realize stuff about myself, realize stuff about the kind of person that I wanted to be, and, like, Waverly's journey in discovering her, her bisexuality, mm-hmm. um, Nicole's journey of trying to just decide who she wants to be, like, the kind of person she wants to be outside of you know, kind of always being pegged for this character of just, oh, she exists to just be Waverly's girlfriend kind yeah. of thing. Like she's trying to, the character herself is trying to be more than just the girlfriend kind yeah. of thing too. And so that's, I kind of get that is not necessarily, you know, just being the girlfriend, but like growing up, you know, my dad's in a famous rock and roll band. I was always, I was always, oh, it's, you know, it's Del's daughter, you know, that's Del's mm-hmm. kid. And it's like, I want to, 
I want to get to a point in my life where if I take my dad somewhere, it's like, oh, you're Bo's dad? Oh, like, yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, aside from Taco Bell guy, <laughs> there was a guy that recognized me in Taco Bell <laughs> in Las funny. Vegas. And my dad just had no idea what was going on. <laughs> and then the story, the last person is Kyler Lee, who plays Alex Danvers in Supergirl. And Alex is uh, like kind of coming of age and learning her, figuring out her identity um, of be- being an older, older woman, you know, in her, I mean, not older, but older than me, mm-hmm. um, like late thirties, you know, learning, learning, you know, just learning about her, her sexuality and learning mm-hmm. that, you know, you may not know who you are, mm-hmm. even though you're, you know, you're into your midlife, you may mm-hmm. still learn new stuff about yourself. And so to kind of just always be open and receptive to those feelings that you may have, because you never know where it could lead you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, those, yeah. Are, those are people. Yeah. But everyone, everyone in this room absolutely inspires me as well. Aww. You know, we've got Brian Cole, my best friend Tina, Katie, my schneester, and then one of my dear friends, you know, Miss Lauren schneester. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's adorable. Who I schnee <laughs> and winter schnee. Oh, schnee. I love my. <laughs> what about you? Katie? Yeah, I think that um, obvious answer is my mom. She's a very strong like Mama. person in my life, and like she. She raised me to be strong, I think, and, like, yeah. she was always, like, the provider in the household and just, like, she really taught me a lot in life. And I do have a lot of people, like, entertainment-wise or fictional character-wise that inspire me as well, but I think just the type of people that inspire me are the people that are just unafraid to be boldly themselves or people that just radiate, like, that sun-like energy where, like, they just exude kindness that's like that's people. you for me katie honestly Aww. heck that's i'm gonna like, cry that's why i was like no we're not allowed to talk about the people that are in the room because there's a lot of people that really inspire but you know me whenever here. you meet someone and they just have that energy of like they just want like they're listening to you they're engaging with you and like they're they're kind they don't like people that are just mean for no reason or just assholes for no reason are like my least favorite people and every time I meet a new person there's that fear of like you know oh gosh is this person going to be ignorant or is this person going to be like an asshole and just like when they're just so casually just kind and confident and just they know what they are about yeah. and they know what they represent like whether it's they love skydiving or they love drawing like they know what they love and they're taking steps like to make themselves the best person they can be like those people consistently inspire me in my life and mm. i'm very thankful that i know a lot of those people and you're one of those people though oh it's a giant love fest that's love fest. gay <laughs> <laughs> and yeah hasn't, that's, that's hasn't my answer hasn't been said yet so i have to say <laughs> it Bo has to say the mandatory that's gay that's gay yeah no i have some you know on on kind of lesser known fact about myself is I have a really hard time telling people that I love them Mm -hmm. um it's just it's uh, I've been through things in my life that I just genuinely it's it's really hard for me to vocalize that like I do love people like there are people that I absolutely do love you know obviously not romantically and stuff like that but like people that I care about very much so it's just like verbally saying I love you to someone is so hard for me Mm -hmm. but when I do actually say you know and it's funny it's you know it's humorous but when I say you know that's gay you know like (laughs) oh that's gay like honestly I do it's it's my way of like kind of acknowledging it and yeah it's just yeah we get real deep on this podcast yeah I know right (laughs) we do we We, you know we have gotten so we go we go all over the place with it it's true no what is the what is the last question we have well last one is actually our fan question because now we are down to one fan question (gasps) uh, an episode yes so we used to do like three, I think. Uh, yeah. But now we have like a three, three two, two, one, one format. format. So it's, oh, you know, cool. the three okay. Weissbreakers, the two uh, Winterview questions, and then the one fan question. Hit me. So our last question of the evening is, what is your favorite and least favorite dessert? And that is from Evan Hunter Gale. Oh, so much. Well, Evan Hunter Gale. Uh, oh, goodness. Okay. So My least things. favorite Least favorite dessert is anything with nuts in it. Oh. No peanuts, no walnuts, no pecans. Yeah. Nothing. Mm-hmm. I think nuts ruin a dessert. Dang, go that. off. Um, to, me. to me, desserts yes. are supposed to be like soft and, yeah, yeah. and inviting. Not, yeah. Unless not it's like a crunchy. Cookie. Well, yeah. Okay. Cookies. Yeah, unless see. But even then, I don't like nuts. Like, I, like I doughy okay. cookies, though, are really nice, too. Oh, they are. Like mm. chewy But cookies. my favorite <laughs> dessert, my... Uh, <laughs> 
That's not fair. Uh, okay, so the one, <laughs> the one, the main thing that's popping into my head, Oreo cheesecake. Oh, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oreo cheesecake. <laughs> Oreo anything, really. I know, right? Oreo cheesecake yes. is like my. Correct. Oh. Yeah. I, it's like my, my Homer. <sighs> my favorite yeah. dessert is just any cheesecake. Like cheesecake itself is like my life. <sighs> so I knew we were so kindred much. spirits. It's so Katie. beautiful. <laughs> and, like, and when you when you're just talking about those cheesecakes, I'm just like, girl. I'm I'm oh. very, very lactose intolerant. Oh, no. So cheesecakes There's a would... pill for that. <laughs> Live a little. There's a pill for that. You there can is. you can take it and then it make sure you won't. Yeah, get I say I'm dying. lactose intolerant, but I absolutely had a chocolate frosty from Wendy's oh. earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, there um, is a Wendy's right. It's next true. To you, exactly. So. Exactly. Oh, maybe I should. Get- oh, Wendy's is so good. <gasps> Wendy's is so you should, good. You should always eat Wendy's. Oh Wendy's. God. Eat fresh. <laughs> Unless that's you can really be Batman, Wendy's. and oh, then yeah. be Batman. <laughs> that's Subway. But, yeah, that's Subway. Fresh, know. never frozen is our Wendy's way. <laughs> yes. Um, Katie is our resident like Wendy fan girl. I am actually Aww. a very big w- Wendy. You fan. should cosplay as Wendy. Funny so. enough, if tell, you look at their official Twitter. So Wendy's paid me actually to um, cosplay. What? They made a Feast of Legends um, Dungeons and Dragons game. Oh, and I have been a resident Wendy's cosplayer for about a year and a half now. They sent me money to do an armor build of the actual um, Wendy's Feast of Legend oh, character. Oh my! And gosh. so I did an official photo shoot. And like, if you look on their Twitter, like you might have to scroll down a little bit. It's about two weeks old, but um, I'm on their Twitter. That's yeah. amazing. She's like and the- armored and has like a spear and a flag, and, and she's Wendy's like yelling cup. and like fire around. <laughs> that her. doesn't surprise me at all. That's I really terrible. love Wendy's. That is so. wonderful. Um, I love you, Wendy's. <laughs> my, this is not a sponsored podcast. This is not a sponsored right? podcast, but it can be. It can be. Um, my favorite. It, like dessert, I guess it wouldn't really be a dessert, but it's something sweet. Mm. Is um, Snickerdoodles? Ooh. I absolutely adore. Snickerdoodles. I have to be in the mood for Snickerdoodles. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like well, I don't, I'm not a huge dessert person, like generally, anyway. So you're more of a savory. Yeah, I'm yeah. more like like yeah. when I'm going out with someone, or like if it's like a very special dinner and I can plan for it. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not really the kind of person that's You're just like, like a, a light, like yeah. my roommates like keep the fridge regularly stocked with like, like yeah. ice cream and, and all kinds of like sweets. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, you guys, God, that's you know what, too much for you, me. you know what is really good though, for mm-hmm. those of you like me who have a major sweet tooth and, mm-hmm. and like need your, your fill. Oh yeah. And, but you don't want to feel guilty at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Halo top. Oh, I've tried Halo, Halo Top is amazing. Mm-hmm. Halo Top is is an ice cream, but it's protein based. Yeah, it's I think it's like three sixty or yeah, two forty like, so, something yeah, like that. But the sugar is low, I believe, <laughs> yeah. and it's it's awesome. It's mm-hmm. really good, and they have a bunch of different flavors. Yeah, so. I've seen. It. I want to try the birthday cake flavor because birthday cake flavored anything is like one of my favorite. It doesn't flavors. do anything for me, really. That's fair. Yeah, like, for me, ugh. for me, it's peanut butter, chocolate peanut butter cup. Again, without peanuts. Mm. Yes. I'm yes. sorry. There is a difference between yes. peanuts and peanut butter. Creamy, not crunchy. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. People Creamy, are like, not how can you like peanut butter if you don't like peanuts? And I'm like, it's the texture. Peanut butter should yeah, yeah, not yeah. crunch. Just like ketchup is good, but like sometimes a tomato is just not exactly. like what you yeah. Oh, bless your beautiful soul. That's such a good you. analogy. I got you. I got you. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what my least favorite dessert yeah. is because I am also a connoisseur of delicious desserts. I think and, my, oh. my least favorite. Creme is not one of my favorites. Oh, I've never tried it. I want to say I've heard it's very, I mean, it's not bad. That's the thing is like, I don't know if I have any, again, anything with nuts. Yeah. 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 It like turns me off. Anything, anything with raspberries. What is the matter with you? Uh, So, okay. I like Razzmatazz from Jamba Juice. What? I I like the Razzmatazz from Jamba Juice. That's not Mm. legit raspberries, Bo. It is raspberries. Dang. Don't judge me, Oh, I know what my least favorite dessert is. What? Sugar-free things <laughs> some sugar oh sorry mike sorry mike <laughs> brian's just like <laughs> he's like come by by accident. are your ears okay <laughs> um i work in front of mike's for a living um uh 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 some sugar-free stuff is okay yeah some of it yeah most of the time some. i've had like real sad experiences like 
It's just like it says that it it's fake. Normal. What's what? the point? Katie, they can't. They can't hurt you anymore. <laughs> They've it's hurt okay. me too many times. No, do not welcome, let them. Welcome to Sugar Free Anonymous. No. <laughs> Sugar Free Anonymous. I'm Katie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fell for their trap. <laughs> they told me it was chocolate chip cookie, but it was oatmeal and raisin. Also, there was this one. Oh time. my god. Oh, my god. oh yeah. That is the truth, and it's actually, not even that's fun. Really so fair. here's the thing: is I actually like oatmeal and raisin. I do too. Yes, but I like, I like they lie knowing to you. that that's what I'm. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. 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 I have to be in the mood for it. It's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. It's like earlier today, I had an autograph signing, and my mm-hmm. handler, who is awesome, yeah, she ran to the green room to see because I hadn't eaten anything all day because it's yeah. been crazy. So yeah. she, um. She went to see what kind of snacks they had, mm-hmm. and she took a picture of this little, little cookie mm-hmm. platter that's that's in the green room. Yeah. And in the corner, I see it. I see these cookies with little black dots in them, and I'm just like... <sighs> They've got to be chocolate chips. I Well, I said, I'm like, those aren't raisin cookies, are they? And she's like, they are. And she put like a little teary-eyed face, oh, and I was bro. like, no! Betrayed, was, <laughs> such betrayal. At least they didn't Top bite into it. Anime betrayal. At least they didn't bite into it and find out that way, though. Yeah, no. I, 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 not mm. today, Satan. Yeah, not that's today, pretty Satan. Much, that's pretty much what I was like telling myself. But yeah, so, yeah. anything with raspberries, raspberries oh, for yeah. me, they're just too, they're just too bitter for me. That's like, fair. They were mm. a little bitter for me at first, but like I've I've had some raspberry tarts and like raspberry dark chocolates that have like been really good. I oh that's something what I can't I can't do dark drizzle? chocolate either. I love dark chocolate. You know what though? Dark chocolate has health benefits too. Yeah. I know it does. That's the only, I is just it sugar don't free? Like it. I don't think so. But like I well, love dark chocolate. Well, it's supposed sugar to help. It's less. It's supposed to help with your anxiety. Actually, it's oh. supposed to help relieve anxiety. Just starts wolfing down. Well, dark you know, chocolate. And, and the thing is, there are different. There are different. Uh, categories of dark chocolate. Okay, you don't have to get the darkest, darkest chocolate. Yeah. that stuff is so bitter. That's like the mm-hmm. purest of chocolate Ooh. because co- the cocoa bean is actually bitter. Mm-hmm. They actually have to, you know, for milk chocolate, they have to add milk. Yes, they have to add sugar to it, yeah. and all of that. So, okay. dark chocolate is Ooh, is I'm learning things. dark chocolate <laughs> almond milk is heaven. Is it? I've it's never so tried good. it. Oh my god, Ooh. it tastes like chocolate milk. That's not even trying to pretend it's chocolate milk. It's I'm, real. I'm it's gonna, good. I'm gonna try this. It's out. so good. I am going to try. I just thought out. of one more dessert that I also don't like. Tap. I love donuts, but I, I don't like the eclairs that have that weird feeling. I like it to have like really good icing inside of it, but like that custard, custard filling, I don't like it. I like custard. Yeah. I, it depends on what it's in, of course. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Like those have always just kind of turned me off. And most jelly donuts would turn me off. Like I like chocolate. But nothing Or beats. donuts with Fruit Loops on them or like cereal on them. So you're talking about voodoo donuts. I guess so. Yep. That's what you just, Isn't that where we went for RTX? Yeah, I've always you just to go there. You just like, described it. You just described. I love a couple chocolatey of donuts, donuts and like icing galore, but like there's just some donuts that just like get under my skin. But see, man. nothing, nothing tops like you know when you go into like a Krispy Kreme Ooh, and yeah. they pull one of the freshly made Ooh. just regular. All right. Glaze. Full disclaimer. I am not a huge fan of Krispy Kreme. I actually do like Dunkin' more. Friendship. I like Krispy Kreme. <laughs> <but like, laughs> well, I'm going to tell over. you why. There's a reason. There's okay, a reason. Okay. It's because I like when the dough is thicker. <gasps> That's fair. And, and, actually, and yeah. Krispy Kreme, their d- more dough cakey. is very, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I like that. Yes, I like that. Me too. So I feel, like, I feel like Lauren is more friendship ended. <laughs> Katie is my new friend. Because <laughs> like I don't. Dislike Krispy Kreme because I think there's no, a place no. for the soft fluffiness, but like cake donuts, just they just pile that icing on. Exactly, and like, it's, so it's, thick. it's delicious. Krispy so Kreme good. is good. Two C's. If that's oh, yeah. two C's, yeah, Eight Krispy C's. Krispy Kreme is good. It's very good, but at the same time, I'm like, but it's not my yeah. The manager go-to. special that's from fair. Um, fair. from Dunkin' is my favorite. It's just like the white icing inside, chocolate on the outside, like oh. How favorite. is it? Never mind. That's that's a very inappropriate question. <laughs> I, I was. Never mind. Listen. Never mind. Move you, it on. You should have. You should have heard the topic. We so last episode, oh, the God. first episode of the season. Now, because we're on episode, we're recording yeah, episode uh-huh. two. Season two season it's two. called oversharing. Katie, Katie no. no. <laughs> I 
I love it. We were going to tell some know. stories we didn't get to, but yeah. you know, the comments have said that maybe we should, and oh, you know, maybe in Lord. the future we will. Oh, it'll be great. God. I look forward to that podcast. Yes, it'll yes, be wonderful. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, that is all of our questions for today. So, Lauren, where can they find you? Okay, you can find me on Twitter at Lauren underscore A underscore Landa. Her only that Twitter. Is, yes, that is my only Twitter. That is the only public social media I have. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything else is is private. Uh, I will try and see if I can make anything else public, but as of right now, <clears throat> the Twitter is the only public page. And please give me a follow for convention announcements, yes. uh, new role <laughs> announcements. Yes. Um, and if you're at a convention that I am at, that is the page I go to to update on everything, mm-hmm. scheduling-wise um, and uh, – Everything else, etc. Yeah. Are there any projects you would like to plug for right now? Yes, actually, there is a. Uh, I can't. I might. Nope. Let's try this again. It's okay. Words, words are a thing. Don't do. It, it, it be like that sometimes. I would like to plug a project, um, and uh, I'm very excited about it. Um, and if you. Obviously, your followers might appreciate this because they already like listening to. I need to stop hitting the mic. Um, <laughs> they listen to. <laughs> they listen to podcasts, so they should probably have an interest in this. Um, for the last year, I've been working on an audiobook. Oh. Uh, the audiobook is written by one of my dear friends, Katie Strange. Mm-hmm. It is a reverse harem paranormal oh. romance novel series. Okay. It is narrated by myself, but it's got a little bit little bit of a twist in it mm-hmm. instead of it just being me it's actually a multicast audiobook okay so it's oh, me fun. and several other actors mm-hmm. that they might be familiar with i can't say Ooh. who is in it yet mm-hmm. but you never know i know that uh you are familiar with one of the actors okay uh i will uh-huh. tell you later okay <laughs> and um and there's there's a lot of uh, great people in it, and it's a very fun, sexy story. Mm-hmm. It's the story of a girl <clears throat> named Darcy who is a witch living mm-hmm. in the human world. Mm-hmm. In this universe, we call it the mundane world mm-hmm. because humans are boring. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah you know. Fair. And uh, <laughs> she is studying at college, and she ends up going to uh, she ends up getting an internship mm-hmm. at a music studio. And one of her first duties when she gets there is to be a band manager for this up and coming band named Phoenix Cry. Mm -hmm. And the band is full of five really, really hot guys, right? Well, there's a twist. They're not just five really hot guys. They're also five really hot werewolves. Oh, no. Oh, no. My weakness. So, oh, girl. Oh, girl. Katie's just like, where can I pre-order this? Oh, girl. So, so. Oh, girl. Um, Tell me more. She's blushing. You guys can't say, but she is blushing right so now. So hard right now. Um, so, so among first their first meeting, uh, this is eighteen plus Darcy. Right? Oh, girl. <laughs> oh, girl. Girl. Uh, on, girl. <laughs> it is a romance novel, so fair. You know. Fair. So, so, um, but the problem is, is that so, so Darcy and. The, the band, they immediately know this mm-hmm. about each other because they can sense it. They're both mm-hmm. magical beings, so yeah. they can they can sense it. Werewolves and witches have always had a dislike for each other over generations. So yeah. it's kind of a forbidden love kind of thing. Ooh. So basically she ends hotter. up falling in love with all of them and they all end up falling in love with her. They're all they're a pack, you know? Yeah. And uh, there's a lot more stuff to it. Mm-hmm. But the book, uh, the series is called the Rogue Witch series. And the okay. first, the the audiobook that we're working on is for the first book. It's called Phoenix Cry. Okay. And um, the audiobook is not available yet, but hopefully it will be soon. Yeah. However, books one to six, I believe one to six, soon to be seven, I believe, or maybe mm-hmm. one to seven. I don't remember. I've lost count. Mm-hmm. They are available on Amazon and for Kindle okay. uh, under the author K period T period strange. Okay. And uh, I really want people to keep an eye out for that because mm-hmm. I've worked. On your Twitter. On my Twitter, yes. yes. I and my myself and the entire cast have worked very hard mm-hmm. to make it. Uh, a good audiobook mm-hmm. um and i'm really hoping um people will listen to it because yeah. i really think i really think it'll be I'll listen to it i oh girl <laughs> i think it'll be fun it's fun it's 
it's very sexy. Mm-hmm. It's it's awesome. I had a lot of fun with it, and I know the cast did too. And I'm very proud of all of them for it. That's awesome. Yeah, it sounds wonderful, and uh, and I really hope that for people who just want to get away, yeah, you know, that that will help them. Yeah, because so, sure. that's the goal. That's the that's goal. cool. Yeah. Well, guys, go check that out. And Bo, where can they find you? Well, as always, you can find me on Twitter at Bo from Kruby, B E A U F R O M K R W B Y. Um, you can also find me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash CB Cosplay. That's where I do all of my live streams, uh, convention panel reactions, all that jazz. It's a lot of fun. My Discord server, the Crimson Raiders, uh, the, you can find the link on my Twitch as well. And I personally really want to plug something that a few of us have been working on. <gasps> plug Nondescript it. Winter Holiday 2. Um, the Preach. sequel to our holiday short last year. We've been working on it for a few months we now. Have. Brian nods his head. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's nearing the end of this long, long, arduous journey. Yes, it is. And um, I'm so, so excited close. for you guys to see it. This is our most ambitious, uh, most intricate script, and I think filming process and just overall process that we've done so far. Mm-hmm. And I'm so proud of it already, and it's not even done yet. We're doing a preview showing of it tomorrow mm-hmm. at our Ruby Bridge panel. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll preview, like, not showing of the whole thing, but preview of, like, the first scene. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, that's something that I'm really, really excited about, and I hope you guys enjoy it when Yay. it does. And you can find me at Connie Day Official on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on the Weird Flex But OK podcast, where I am a host with Jordan Jacks Blade Down. You can find me on uh, Dr. Crafty on YouTube and, of course, Kruby Productions, where we host this podcast, and I do all the acty stuff. And mm-hmm. thank you guys so much for listening, and um, quick, say something funny. I always say butts. You but do. Like, it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> Blah! Blah! And that's a wrap, guys. <laughs> Catch you later. <laughs> Bye, Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>